Surgeons who work with amputating limbs, what was your worst OF asterisk 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 moment? Surgeon here. Have a few stories. One called to the ED to evaluate a table saw injury to arm, found a mid-forearm almost complete amputation hanging on by a skin bridge. We were able to reattach it and I think the patient has good muscle function but tenuous sensation back now. To my intern year, got a consult for a cyclist who was blindsided by a pickup truck. Entire leg was completely mangled. He arrived intubated and sedated with lots of other injuries. Dude never woke up. It was the first time I saw a leg filleted open from trauma, with exposed femur also fractured, and multi-level open tib fib fracture, just hanging out of the tissue in the head. We amputated the leg at the shin and then femur while trying to save him. He died of massive kidney failure from muscle injury. Dead muscle protein clogs the kidneys like taking a big dump clogs your toilet. Kidneys failed causing liver to fail and then lungs fill with fluid means they can't ventilate. And cardiac issues follow from electrolyte abnormalities. No amount of existing technology can bring you back from that. Unfortunately. 3. One of my worst cases was a patient with really bad sepsis from an infection. All the blood vessels in your extremities constrict. So amputating fingers isn't all that common. But this was catastrophic, as we ultimately had to amputate all four limbs. I'll never forget writing that op report. You list each procedure for these documents. And it went. 1. Amputation left arm. 2. Amputation right arm. 3. Amputation left leg. 4. Amputation right leg. Patient was a Family Guy fan and said their Halloween costume would be the pirate the following year. At least they didn't lose their sense of humor. Cause that was ultimately some funny shit when the blood was green, a rare disease caused by overdose of migraine medicine. Surgery resident here. The oh shit moment doesn't really happen in the OR, but can happen after. One consideration is always at what level do you need to amputate. The toe, a transmetatarsal, BKA or AKA below or above knee amputation. If you decide too much some sicker or more elderly patients may never regain mobility again. If you choose too little, the disease process, infection or ischemia, might not be controlled or won't heal and you end up going back for more. The realization you have to go back for more is the moment. This isn't 100% on point, but I think close enough and I think interesting. I'm now a head and neck surgeon, but during my trauma rotation as an intern we had an extremely inebriated guy come in who'd been hit by a car just outside of the party he'd been at and suffered a traumatic amputation the accident knocked his leg off at the knee, so he's wheeled into the trauma gurney on a bed, and his leg is brought into the same room literally in a bucket of ice. The guy was super combative trying to push us around, and at one point literally yelled f off. Let me walk it off. By my calculations he would have made it one step. Two tops. Made it one step. Two hops. I remove a lot of eyes. When training, I had a nasty one that I just couldn't grip with forceps while I was making the main cut in the optic nerve. I had to resort to gripping it with my fingers. As you are imagining, I made the cut. It shot through my fingers like a grape. Hit me in the chest, rolled down my gown, bounced off my foot and rolled about 10 feet on the floor, leaving a bloody snail trail. It was a lunch break change so about 10 people were in the room switching over. I headed upstairs when I was done to join my preceptor in another case. He sees me walk in, sees a bloody spot on my shoe cover and asks, You didn't drop the eye did you? My head just sank. Agreed with the surgeon above that our training is so long, detailed that we don't have these moments frequently. However, in residency I was doing a hemipelvectomy essentially a removal of half of a patient's pelvis with or without removal of that leg with my attending surgeon and we came to a crucial step. After a few hours of dissection and planning we had made our cuts on the pelvis, basically planning and mapping out the portion we would remove. The time came for us to complete the cuts by levering out the half of the pelvis with our hands which required a lot of force. After the levering, there was an audible crack expected but then the wound immediately filled with blood unexpected. 
My training to that point told me to immediately pack the wound and hold pressure. My attending looked at me and said keep holding pressure and then scrubbed out took off his gown and gloves and left the room. I'm now standing there over this young patient holding pressure with all my might so that my arms are shaking. I looked to anesthesia and his PA and asked what the hell was going on. Here I am single-handedly keeping this patient alive with no direction or immediate game plan about how to fix our problem. This was my oh f moment. An eternity it seemed went by and my attending came back in, scrubbed in, and we then methodically isolated the large bleeding vessels and tied them off, cauterized them. Afterwards I asked him what he was doing. He said over the years he had learned if he had a rise in anxiety from something unexpected I guess his oh f moments he would take a breather whether physically removing himself from the situation or not to refocus and psyche himself up to fix the issue. This was one of my greatest learning moments of my career. Not a surgeon, but I work in a facility that helps with rehabilitation of amputees and getting them walking again. I watch a resident go to stop a door from closing with his stump and it was like the world slowed down. From the moment I saw him move his stump to stop it, to the point of impact I was screaming oh f that's gonna hurt so bad. And it did. He looked at me and just cried. I pushed him back to his room in his wheelchair and he apologized profusely saying that it's just instinct cause he had a leg there for so long. He ended up splitting the stitches back open and the infection that came after ended with him going from a mid-shin amputation to above the knee the next week. He was a great guy. He's walking and back to living his regular life again. Not a surgeon but a leg amputee. I was reading the notes from my surgery and the doctor stripped the screws when trying to remove the titanium plate that was holding my leg together. He had to call in backup. I work in the quality department for a large hospital system. We had a doc take off the right foot, instead of the left. That was a lot of fun paperwork as well as a lawsuit. Wrong side surgeries are surprisingly more common than you'd think. Wrong side amputation however is thankfully more rare. I was first assisting on an emergent guillotine ankle disarticulation you basically just rip and cut the foot off from the leg and leave the bones sticking out. I was providing traction on the intensely infected foot while the surgeon sliced through the remaining tendons holding it in place. When the last one snapped I fell back, holding onto the now independent foot, squeezing a load of green pus out onto my chest, was just thankful it hit the gown and not my exposed neck. I'm not a surgeon but I did rotate in surgery back in my med school days. My first day on surgery rotation I was assigned to the trauma team this was at a level 1 trauma center in an inner city hospital in NY. It just happened that on my first day, all the residents were in a meeting so when the trauma surgeon needed an assistant, she asked me to join her for an emergency above knee amputation of about infected leg wet gangrene in a very poorly controlled diabetic. So my first day on surgery I'm in the OR holding this man's infected leg while the surgeon saws it off. After she's done, she literally squeezes out pus from the thigh. The odor was putrid. It's one of those smells that lingers for days. For the surgeon it was just another day. But for me it was definitely an oh f moment. The first surgery I saw as a nursing student was a toe removal. Poor patient had to have his big toe removed due to a diabetic ulcer that had gotten infected. I was so afraid of the thought of getting nauseous with my first surgery. I didn't eat breakfast that day. The case started at noon, I was wrapped in the sterile gown and mask, hair cover, shoe covers. I was positioned by the circulating nurse in a spot with a great view but wouldn't get in the way. The case started and the doc started cauterizing bleeding veins, capillaries right off the bat. I learned that cauterizing flesh smells a lot like like searing steak. My empty stomach and hungry brain didn't know the difference. And I could hear my stomach growling at the smell. I thought it would be just my embarrassment. Until the surgeon and nurse both looked at me. They could hear it too. I'm not sure what I said. But I was glad my mask hid how I was struggling not to cry. It was awkward until the doc took the severed toe and tossed it over the patient and into the formalin container. He had great aim resident surgeon, assisting on a below-the-knee amputation due to necrosis from diabetes. Leg was incredibly crusty with dead skin. Removed the leg, handed it off to a tech to put into a box for disposal Idaho Spud's cardboard box lined in plastic. Tech trips on his booty, almost fell, but squeezed the leg so hard the inside popped out from the skin sock. It flew across the floor, leaving a slug-like trail of purulent slime as it skidded. We wretched. We laughed. 
We moved on. As a med student I used a giggly saw to remove a dead leg from just above the knee from a man who was homeless and horribly diabetic. When it came off the surgeon said here, and handed it to me. Then he said take a picture. It's your first one, like someone was gonna have me hold it like a fish I caught. He was joking. But I was freaked out and dropped it on the floor. Such a weird moment in my training. I want a real surgeon to come and tell a story about when they locked their keys in the car or something. OR nurse here, recently did a below the knee amputation, the leg was severed and I was passing it off to the circulating nurse for specimen, went to take a clamp off a large artery and my poor co-worker got a big spray of blood, felt terrible. Had a trauma case one time where the paramedics said a dog amputated a patient's foot, we were expecting them to be blowing it out of proportion and got ready for just a severe bite, nope, we were wrong. Patient rolls in and the foot is almost completely off except a piece of skin holding it together. Turns out the dog must have been super pissed because it chomped right through. Nurse in an emergency department. Accidentally amputated a toe that was rotting in a boot when I pulled it off the patient's foot. There were many f said that evening. Does that count? Back in my trauma surgeon days. We had a pretty major fracture dislocation situation in a dude's right humerus with associated degloving. His brachial artery was tangled up in the bony mess. And we took him to theater overnight. We were there for 10 hours, the vascular consultant, the ortho consultant, and two registrar, residents me and one other. We were ready to source graft, amputate, or ORIF, or XFIX. The OT nurses probably hated us because we had to maneuver everything while also having x-ray in the process. I'll be honest, we were physically and mentally exhausted by the end, and we thought we got away without amputation, but no dice. We had to take him for a relook the following night. Only problem was the vascular consultant was in theater dealing with a triple A. So you've got three ortho surgeons and a petrified vascular reg and this mangled arm. And it's not an anatomical arm like in the textbooks. Nothing is where you expect. Even though three quarters were there the night before, you have to reprogram your muscle memory. The whole procedure was an oh f moment. We had to remove all the metal we'd put in the night before, which keeping the arm stable enough to not rip the soft tissue so that the stump could be modeled healthily. It all went well, but many people were bricking themselves that night. I know some of those words. We had a trauma come in from a concrete factory. I'm not sure about the exact details but a guy fell into some machine and his left leg got pretty messed up. We went to the OR to wash it out and evaluate if he needed an amputation or not. Once we got it all cleaned up, we saw it was pretty mangled and there was concrete encasing part of his leg. So we start to do an above the knee amputate because there's concrete in his knee and distal femur. As we're pushing the oscillating saw through the femur it hits more resistance usual and starts to make unusual sounds. We had missed some concrete on the back of the guy's thigh and tried to saw through it. Almost everyone in the room, the nurses, anesthesia, the students, etc. said oh f at the same time. We ended up having to go even higher up on femur. I'm not sure whatever ended up happening later on prosthesis wise because we transferred the patient to the ortho service. Medical student future orthopedic surgeon. On my vascular surgery rotation, we had a gentleman who initially came in after a left TMA transmetatarsal amputation, where your toes are amputated that wasn't healing and becoming infected. The next step after that was a BKA below knee amputation. In an effort to both stop the infection from progressing higher up his leg and also be able to receive adequate blood flow to heal, that surgery was executed well. But unfortunately the day he was cleared to work with physical therapy, he fell on the other right knee, which created a hematoma that later became infected. About a month later, when I had transitioned from vascular to orthopedics, we performed a salvage aka above knee amputation on that leg. Our gentleman went from being able to walk with difficulty to losing both legs in the span of about two months. Not a surgeon but used to work in a nursing home and I was meeting a patient for the first time without reading their file. As I entered the room I said wakey wakey let's jump out of bed, and as I looked at him I said let's kick those covers off. Once I removed the blanket and saw he had no legs things got quiet quick. I've always told my patients to jump out of bed, no matter the state of their limbs. One guy with a straight face said, I can't. Those bastards stole it. 
He lost a leg in World War II. I grinned and he hopped out of bed. He had a great sense of humor. When I was a child, my dad's favorite joke whenever I hurt myself and cried was to grab a meat cleaver from the kitchen, hide it behind his back, examine my injury closely, prodding the sore spots with his finger, and after 45 seconds of examination of the bruising say I'm sorry son, we're going to have to amputate your insert leg, foot, limb, hun, come hold him down while I chop please, and he'd whip out the cleaver and carefully line it up while six year old me would scream and try and squirm free and run away, he'd then usually say when I hobbled away oh, so it must not be that bad after all, hun, cancel that procedure, turns out he can actually walk, one time he did this and I caught him in the stomach with a little kick and he let out a little oh f and almost dropped the cleaver, so this reminded me of that. Thanks. Not too long ago, here in Argentina there was a case where the doctor cut the wrong leg. After the shit show this old lady was moved to another hospital to continue proper treatment and she discovered after another medical review that it wasn't even needed to cut the remaining leg in the first place. She died some weeks later by a heart attack. Poor lady, 